Welcome back to State of the Nation. We have heard quite a bit on the issue of the capacity and ability of the electricity distribution companies on their remittance levels. In March, for instance, the Nigerian bulk electricity trading, NBET PLC, blamed its inability to meet its obligation to electricity generating companies, that's the Genco's, on the low remittances from the distribution power firms, that's the Disco's which is between 25 and 30 percent. Well, due to the shortfall, the Jenkos too cannot meet their obligations to their gas supplies. That pretty much holds true today. Rahila Thomas is the country director, energy markets and regulatory consultants, Nigeria. She joins us now to uh, have a broader analysis of what this means to the country's electricity sector. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on State of the Nation. What's your understanding of uh, the remittance level challenge that persists for the Jenkos and the Discos today? Okay, so uh, I guess you talked about it earlier about... Um the historical payments that you used to make. So in 2018, the remittance from the discos were at 27%. Now, that was because there was a 701 billion, that, uh, which was an intervention, the pay payment assurance guarantee by government. So discos were paying on an average 27%. Now, this was, payments were done arbitrarily by different discos. And I think NERC has, took the decision that in 2019, we're not going to have that any longer because we need to plan properly. If government is going to inject another, uh, inter make another intervention, it has to be very strategic, it has to be well managed, it has to be well planned. So this year, they needed to set the remittance levels for every disco so that everyone can plan on a revenue you are expecting. Now, so the issue is not in the remittance set, but how it was set. So, um, if you have 11 distribution companies, for example, and eight of them defaulted, that is an indication that there's a problem. If there are just two of them on the list, then no issues. But eight is saying to me that there's an ability, there's a capacity issue here. How can they pay? Why are they, why are they defaulting? So, so this year, 2019, that you know, uh, NERC had decided to issue this order it was done based on the level of losses by each disco. Now, I'll explain when we talk about how was this remittance set. So for each um, Naira you sell of kilowatt, mm. NERC is saying that you are only losing 20% of that, of that revenue you get. But in reality, I'm losing 60%. That's 60 oh, Kobo. So. so for every Naira of kilowatt, that is sold to you as customers, NERC is assuming in the tariffs that you and I pay that you are only losing 20%. But in my reality, when I bill and I collect, I'm losing 60 kobo. So there's a mismatch between what uh, the regulator is thinking are my losses and what my reality is. That's the reality for the discos and the Exactly. The re no, no. For Leave the Jankos aside. For the discos. For the discos. Now, they are the ones cashing, you know, getting the money. So when they get the money, they have to pay upstream. But they are getting less than what the regulator expects them to receive. Now, that is the genesis of this problem. So NERC has set remittance levels based on losses that they feel that the discos are at. So they are saying that discos are more efficient. But the discos are not that efficient. So you are certain you are, last year I was paying 27%, and this year, 2019, you expect me to pay 44%. That is a huge, a huge leap. So the discos are saying that, well, I am happy to pay a remittance level, but please, can we recognize where I am today? So at the levels they are now, they are not sustainable. They, they're not sustainable. They can't meet those. La they, they can't meet those remittance levels. Now, even the three. So, we'll talk about the three that were able to make it: Ibadan, uh, I think, Eko, and Jaws. The question to ask is for how long. Now, the way the the minor review order, which was issued, is set, is that in January there will be an increase in tariffs. Today, the industry average is about thirty-one percent. By January, that will go up to 40. That's in January Sorry, 2020. Uh, in today, the, 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 the average tariff is at 31 naira per kilowatt. In January, that will go up to 41 naira. 
That's in 2020. 2020. Now, by July 2020, it will go up to 44 naira. And the expectation is that by July, the, the, the discos would pay their bills 100%. So there is no intervention. There's no 600 billion to support that. Now, now, now some experts believe that uh, the discos, their licenses should be cancelled. I've heard some experts like yourself uh, have said so. Not you in particular. But are you in support of that? I mean, what is the objective of cancelling the licenses when you've set me up to fail? So if you have set something that you have not enabled me to meet. And on the back of that, you want to take my license. I mean, then what happens after that? So the question to ask is, you collect these licenses, what happens next? Are there people that are coming to buy these companies immediately? Is government going to run them again? But you're aware that we did have a pri privatization process yes. that uh, brought about the, the discos, the, yes. even, even the Jenkos. Mm -hmm. Are you saying it, it was faulty? Well, you know, that's a, that's a huge debate. I mean, it depends on what side of the, of the table you are sitting. So uh, you, you've heard people saying that, well, uh, they shouldn't have um, privatized everything at the same time. They should have done it in piecemeal. You hear some school of thought saying that, well, the people that own it now lack the technical capacity. But what some people fail to realize is that when they were, they, they were, these companies were privatized, they required technical partners with sound knowledge of distribution business and with a stake in the business as well. Now, in five years, you've seen some of them come and go. And then you should ask the question, why have they come and go? Why are they coming and why are they going? Why have they not stayed in those five years? For some of them, they have changed. Now, all that boils down to money. Can you pay technical partners to have us, you know, to stay in this distribution business, which is a loss-making business. Can you keep them? So that's an issue. So for me, it's not that was the privatization wrong or was it right. I think we have gone past that. I think we should be looking into the future. What, so what, 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 what does the future hold? Done? So now I talked about the losses. I think there must be a recognition of where the true level of losses are today. There is the notion that, you know, um, we wake up one day and everybody will see 24-7 electricity. That is not going to happen. Now, I'm also not advocating for the distribution companies to come to government or the regulator and say that, well, my losses today are 75%. I need you to put that in my tariffs. No. But there must be a sit down to have a conversation that, well, uh, when you took over these companies, this is the loss trajectory you set. Today, everything is out of whack. Where can we meet? What's that middle ground? If I, as a regulator, I'm thinking that you are 20%, but your reality, you are 60%, can we come down to 40? And we have parameters around that. So there has to be a conversation around what those true losses are, because that is what feeds into our tariffs that you and I pay as customers. So Where, yeah, go ahead. If, if, if you take that as a solution, what will be the... Um, the impact on the lenders who have helped these uh, uh, discos to, to be afloat? Well, when you, when you talk about, when, when you have the impact here, when you put in the real losses inside tariffs, obviously there will be a tariff hike. Now, what would bring down the tariffs from where they are is the level of generation. So you have two things here, two parameters at, at play. You have generation levels, you have the losses. If you need to, if you, if you plug in the right losses, the types have to go up. If you want the losses, if you want the types to come down, then you have to increase generation. So for example, the Siemens intervention that government, I mean, you've heard talk, you know, being talked about, uh, the plan is to hit seven gigawatts. Now, if the, the, the entire investment that's supposed to go in there and they get to seven gigawatts, electricity types can drop by almost 20%. But I think, let us go back to the remittances. Let's have that conversation around the remittances, that there's need for government to say that, today, these are my losses. I'm going to plug it in. Determine the remittance levels that the discos need to pay. And, you know, last year, there was 700 billion. This year, 600 billion. Next year, we don't know what it is. The Jenkos 
can't plan that way. The Jenkos had that 700 billion in 2018, but today they're out of pocket waiting for 600 billion to come up. There has to be a five-year to 10-year plan so what for intervention. To, what, what, what happened to the intervention monies that, that was given to them? Well, they took it, but it did not heal the entire value chain. That's the problem. So you had 701, 701 billion okay. that was given, but it didn't heal the entire value chain because of the mm. way it was structured. That, that's a good place to let it rest, Thomas. Thank you so much indeed for talking to us. Rahila Thomas, Country Director, Energy Markets and Regulatory Consultant, Nigeria. Thanks for watching. From you as well, I'm Gimba Umar and this is State of the Nation. Mm -hmm.